Hey, welcome back to Mr. Repair Shop. It's another installment of What's the Deal? And tonight, what's the deal? Well, tractor seats. We'll, uh, let me bring the camera around and we'll, we'll do the thing. But tonight we're going to talk about tractor seats and the history, internet history, stories, the thoughts, why they went from, this wasn't even the worst ones, um, to, you know, what they are now. Actually, this one, one point would have had like a, a nice vinyl cover on it. It's got some left right there. All right, so tractor seats. Uh, early on, it seems like farmers were very much, they were, they were, it's back, you know, it's not to sound bad when I say it this way. But it's back when, you know, the same one, men were men, and yeah. So tractor seats were just, like the last idea for manufacturing. Look at some of the other tractors and there's gonna be pictures that'll be going along here that I'll find. And they were just, you know, basically the last idea they had is, hey, put this metal stake down, put a steel cast iron pan seat on it, call it good. I mean, there's ones with like bolts in the middle. I mean, just uncomfortable. And, um, but it was like a badge of honor to sit on an uncomfortable tractor seat. If you had a comfortable tractor seat, well, what was wrong with you? Um, but, as tractors had more than one speed, something was needed. Now, at that time, putting your tractor inside was not the norm, and that's why everything was mostly cast iron. You know, like this seat on this 44 Formal, um, which the shock actually still somewhat works on this thing. That's impressive. But, sidebar. So tractor seats, they started off as just, you know, you know, like I said, you look on the early stuff and they were in weird positions. They weren't thinking of creature comforts. You were, I mean, you were in the middle of how knows how much machinery, you know, with moving parts, you know, OSHA, never heard of it. That was, uh, that was the theme back then. Well, as tractors, number one, had to compete against a bunch of other brands. I remember in the early 1900s, and I don't know the exact number, but up until like 1940, especially probably been trailing off in 1950, there was a ton of tractor manufacturers, just like automotive. There was a ton of automotive manufacturers. What do you get when you have that? You have a lot of competition. So suddenly, and at that point, there was nobody that said, oh, I have to have this brand of tractor because my grandpa had it. They were this guys that were gonna become the grandpas that we now would say, I have to have this kind of tractor. So brand loyalty was really developing within these manufacturers and the ones that were gonna be able to survive the next 20 to 30 years. So that's why you had them starting to design, and a lot of them would use a seat with maybe some kind of a spring steel to at least give you some comfort, but again, using a cast iron or a stamped steel pan because most tractors sat out. If you did any kind of a vinyl or anything, it would sit out in the sun, it would get, you know, it would get deteriorated, it would sit out in the cold, through all the weather, it would get wet, and just, it wouldn't work. So that's why we will talk about that era later once the implementation of caps and stuff comes in. And so that's why you had, I mean, go just, I was going to try and get some pictures, and I'll have some pictures, but I was going to try and get some examples. And there's a ton of different ones of just different style spring seats. Um, and it wasn't until the 30s when manufacturers started to take that into consideration. That's why in the 30s is when you had tractors like the Oliver 70 with the streamlined look to actually one of the first tractors that said, hey, let's try and not look like, you know, 15,000 things hanging out trying to kill you. Looking at you, John Deere. Um, and so they had a seat on a 70 that was basically two bars. And then there was just like canvas sack over those. And they would give you a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of comfort there. It wasn't sitting on steel all day. And when they wore out, you could put a seat bag, canvas, you know, and put it right over that. And you could, you could have another, you'd be fine. Have another seat cover every, every year. You could, you know, multiple times a year, you could have a new seat. And that was nice. And then Oliver later came out with a different style suspension. We'll talk about that. But once, you know, like I said, when, when there were so many manufacturers and everyone was having to compete, you started to see some manufacturers try and make big jumps. We're talking about the Minneapolis Moline UDLX. Now, obviously, if you're any kind of a tractor collector, you know what the UDLX is. I'm going to show a picture of it. But you know what it is? It's the tractor that looks kind of like a car. And now, if you somehow had one of the 125 that were made, they're worth, you know, a, a billion dollars. But those were the first, they were the first tractor that came standard with a cab. There were other tractors that had cabs, before you get down in the comments, but there's the first one standard with a cab. 
standard with a heater, standard with a radio. Now you go and look at a tractor nowadays and that's all going to be there obviously, but um, they were made from 38 to 41. Now, there's they only made about 125. They weren't really a big seller. There are some that say because of the war building up and everyone having to, you know, everything had to be kind of become less frills, that hurt them. If Moline would have come back out with that tractor in 45, maybe it would have been a bigger seller when everyone was trying to spend money. You know, and that's one of those you don't know because it might have been a bigger seller if they could come out in 45 with all those creature comforts, the heater, the radio, a 40 mile an hour road gear, but made it a little easier. Like if we run the PTO, you don't have to have both back doors open. Um, there might have been another, and who knows, maybe at the time Moline tried to do it, but otherwise they made it for three years and they're, they're literally worth a billion bucks. But that was the first tractor with the cab. And I mean, when it came out, a lot of times when any manufacturer came out with something that old time farmers deemed too comfortable, they would literally get slack. They would say, oh man, that's like when the Oliver, they had a style suspension seat where there was two rubber bushings that would ride and you would, you would sit on those and it would kind of help taking the, you know, soften the field bumps. And a lot of people said, oh, that's too comfortable. You know, you're going to become too soft. At the same time you had everybody, every, a lot of a lot of the like the next generation of farmers was trying to run away from the farm because they didn't want to be sitting on one of these for eight hours. Because the problem with this is it's great, you got some suspension, but you're also essentially sitting on a poco stick going across the field, bouncing along. So manufacturers had to change something and that started to happen um, in the late 50s. And that was when you have, I call it the era of four inch foam. Because it seemed like almost every manufacturer, even with some suspension, they all had foam pads on about that big because they knew that was actually more comfortable, it was safer because it wasn't so bouncy. I mean, I'm a big guy, so I've usually bottomed these babies out, but you get a bouncing on them and it's like, my gosh, if I had a bumper on, so when I'm cruising these things in road gear, putzing around town, terrorizing the town of Fulton, you know, you can just go bounce, you know, pogo stick right off the thing it feels like. So that's when the late fifties, they came out with that. And it, a lot of that comes down to what manufacturers were having to compete for in the early day was all these manufacturers, what, what brand was going to be the best and what brands were going to survive. By the 50s, those brands that were going to survive were starting to group together. You had, you know, brands kind of joining teams, as you will see, as you'll see. And then it became another as, you know, let's say you were really into Avery tractors. Well, they didn't become a brand and it was around that 50s and 60s. Well, guess what? You have to become a new, you have to find a new brand to be a fan of. You know, you have to find a new brand that you can go to a dealer that's close. So again, the fight came of who can be more, who can give more amenities to the farmer, make it more comfortable when they're on the farm eight hours a day. Also, you had farms getting bigger and the bigger the farms, the more time you're going to be spending on the tractors. You know, you want, maybe sometimes it was you're in a higher farm hand, yada, yada, yada. Comfort started to get even better. It was easier. They were thinking more about how you were going to be able to actually run things on the tractor. You look at, if you go through, we're gonna start, like I said, once we get um, this tractor done, this will be the first one, we go through the series of like the tractor talks and the reviews. We'll go through how the seating position and the operator area, because as they went, they got better, it was more economical, it was more, yeah, I guess whatever. Um, ergonomical, that's the word I was looking for, where it was easier to run, because again, manufacturers in the 60s were having to fight to gain new customers, either pull them away from other manufacturers or bring in new customers that maybe were a fan. You know, when you, when your brand went down the drain, you went looking for somewhere else. A lot of Oliver customers, when they became part of White and then White discontinued Oliver, a lot of them went other places. Yes, there was still a White tractor that was a lot of Oliver, but they were disappointed. The, the dealership network had been affected. So that comes to the last creature comfort. AC. So you had, at this stage, you had a lot more comfortable seat on all the tractors. Um, they were starting to become more with cabs. You know, the UDLX was probably 20 years ahead of its time with the cab. Um, there was other manufacturers, like I said, with cabs, but, and there was other ones out there, but I'm going to be honest. There's not that, not that many look good. Like an Oliver Super 99 with a cab looks okay, but it looks better open station, let's be honest. Those Oliver 70s with cabs, they're neat. you kind of cool to see them at an auction, the ones that were the factory ones or whatever. But again, whatever. Um, 
But in the mid 60s is when all the manufacturers and the aftermarket started jumping on the cab game because you wanted to get the operator in the shade, you know, not out baking in the sun. At that stage too, we were starting to discover the fun thing of skin cancer. And so all of a sudden farmers maybe didn't want to be out, you know, baking in the sun all day. Maybe he had that little umbrella that would hang that was really helping out. So cabs became out. So in 1965, Alice Chalmers was the first manufacturer with the 190 to put a factory AC on a tractor in 65. They were the first ones to do it. And I can only imagine that when that came out in 65, you had the farmers that were saying, oh, I don't need AC, you know, I'm a, I don't need that, you know, frilly stuff in my tractor, whatever. And soon after, all the manufacturers jumped on. Then you had, as once you had that, and then the biggest hurdle in cab design was in 72 when the Soundguard cab came out for John Deere, and that really changed the game. Um, it made it where the cab was no longer just something placed on the tractor. It was built, you know, the tractor was basically built, it was built kind of into it, and it was allowing, so it was better for soundproofing, that's why they call it the Soundguard. Um, way better on visibility, and all the manufacturers had to then, again, jump up to being in the same level as that competition. And then, as you said, the next, between this early 70s and today, now you got heated and cooled seats and, you know, air ride and all that stuff. Because again, if you think about it, much bigger farmers, you're spending way more time on the farm and you have to keep, you know, if you're going to be the farm, if you're going to be a tractor for eight hours and you're going a lot faster across the fields, um, you want to, you're going to have to be in a comfortable seat. That was the thing too, as tractor speeds increased in the field, you will see the seats get better because it was for the sake of, you didn't want to have farmers with bent over broken backs. But, so, that's what's the deal with seats. I don't know, this one I was thinking about the other day, and I thought, well, it would be kind of an interesting topic, and do some history on, and check it out. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other ideas for um, topics. I think I've had a couple that I've, I gotta go back and look, I think I've had a few that I haven't seen yet. But, um, but yeah, oh, we'll see how it is. Um, I guess we're gonna do a few more different things. Otis is just about ready to uh, say goodbye. Let's see the lights. Ooh, um, so we'll get this one all wrapped up. I, I basically, I got to the store to get a filter tonight and weird, they don't keep filters for 85 year old tractors in stock. Oh, also we got, here it is. We have the Bipster stickers are in. So here's how this is gonna work. Um, if you stuck around long enough and you got through my terrible history lesson. Um, if you want a sticker, Here's how it's gonna work. Um, my email address, I'm gonna put it in the description. Send me an email with your address. I'm gonna, I'll try and get as many as out as I can. Um, I have so many. And if you want to help um, with the cost, I don't, you know, I'm basically this first round, I'm just gonna send it to a bunch of my friends that have been watching and hanging out. So a lot of you guys are already, I'm gonna be contacting you about getting an address so I can send you a sticker. Um, but if you wanna help out, basically the cost to get a sticker and shipped is like three bucks. Um, when you email me, I'll send you a link if you um, we can give contact for uh, a PayPal that you can just basically, if, if you want to. If not, just let me know. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to get them out to everybody, but um, yeah, so we got some stickers in. Like I said, we'll keep up with that. Eventually, we're going to do t-shirts again because, I don't know, that was fun. I haven't done t-shirts for a while. It's when I go to the track anyway. So that's what's the deal with seats and creature comforts of tractors. And uh, if you think I was talking out of my ear, let me know. Um, and if you like this uh, series, give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, hit the subscribe, subscribe button. If you want your friends to laugh at me with you, make sure to share it with them on all the social medias. Um, check out Bibster Promotions on Facebook. Also, um, check out, as we're getting ready to go local racing again, check out DoneRight.tv, where you can watch all the local racing. He's, they're going to be down in Lee County uh, Friday with an MLRA show and 410 sprint car. So check that out. Um, I'll throw a link to DoneRight.tv in the description as well. So you can see that. That's who we worked with last year when we were filming. We're not filming this year because of with baby and pulling and getting busy doing other things, but um, we support them 100%. So check them out as well in the description. And uh, other than that, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.